This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Three dead in Trelawney crash. At least three persons, including a resort staff bus driver, are confirmed dead following a two-vehicle collision along a section of the Braco Main Road in Trelawney this afternoon. Over 18 others traveling in both vehicles sustained various injuries and have been rushed to the hospital. Police are still on the scene and have not yet released the identity of the victims. Reports are that shortly after 2.30 p.m., the driver was transporting staff members from the Ocean Coral Resort in Coral Spring when he collided with a Toyota minibus. The staff driver in the Toyota Coaster bus was killed on the spot, along with two passengers traveling in the minibus. More updates to follow. Jamaican escapee in Bahamas captured A Jamaican detainee who escaped custody in the Bahamas has been captured. The police report that Winston Walker was apprehended early this morning in the area of a sea breeze lane after responding to a call that a prowler was on a property. Walker escaped from the detention facility at Fox Hill Road on Wednesday. The Jamaican is in custody on charges of attempted murder, armed robbery and attempted armed robbery. The police thanked the public for their assistance in the case. Bar owner murdered in Manchester A bar owner was shot and killed in Greenville, Manchester on Thursday morning. He has been identified as 40-year-old David Reed. It is reported that about 6.30 a.m., Reed was pounced upon by gunmen as he attempted to open his bar. He died on the spot. On Wednesday, the body of 61-year-old Anthony Williams who worked as a watchman at a bar in Christiana, also in the parish, was found with his hands tied and the mouth gagged. Investigations into both murders are ongoing. Up to August 29, a total of 36 people have been murdered in Manchester. This is a 100% increase when compared to 18 homicides for the corresponding period in 2021. JPS warns against electricity theft following electrocution of Manchester Boy. The Jamaica Public Service Company is appealing to persons to desist from stealing electricity and putting children's lives in danger. The appeal comes against the electrocution of 11-year-old Ricardo Richards in Manchester on Monday. Preliminary reports according to JPS are that the young boy was electrocuted when he came in contact with illegal wires running along the ground providing electricity to nearby premises. He was taken to hospital, where he died while being treated. The JPS says it is saddened by this tragic incident and extended condolences to the boy's family and the community. The company is again appealing to persons to get their electricity supply legally, as it says the dangerous crime of electricity theft can result in loss of life and the property. Three teenagers to face court on gun charge. Formal proceedings have begun in the case of the three teenagers who were arrested in connection with the seizure of an illegal firearm on Lower Harbor Street in Falmouth, Trelawney, on Monday, August 29. The teens, two 16-year-olds and a 14-year-old, were scheduled to appear in the family court in Falmouth on Thursday, September 1. They were charged following an interview in the presence of their attorneys. They were each charged with the offense of illegal possession of a firearm. The teenagers were handed over to the police by private security personnel about 1.30 a.m. Reports are that the security team responded to an alarm that went off in the area. The security officers saw the three teenagers walking along the roadway, acting in a manner that aroused their suspicion. The teenagers were accosted and searched, and one browning pistol with an empty magazine was found inside a knapsack bag that they were carrying. The firearm was seized and the police were alerted. Little Don's River Beach closed amid a fear of reprisal following fatal shooting. The St. Anne police say Little Don's River Beach in the parish has been temporarily closed due to fear of reprisals following last Saturday's fatal shooting of a man near the facility. 25-year-old Roshin Hausen, otherwise called the brother of Folkland in Ocherias, was shot about 7.20 p.m. in that incident. Superintendent David White, head of the St. Anne Police, said the police are still gathering evidence in relation to the murder. 
However, he expressed the concern that Little Don's River Beach is being governed by a criminal network linked to Stairtown in the parish. He said the man's murder is believed to be the result of possible jealousy, and the police intelligence suggests there could be some reprisal which might take place at Little Don's River, which is why the facility has been closed. Little Don's River Beach is owned by the Urban Development Corporation, but Superintendent White believes the facility is being used as an income stream for criminals. He said the matter is cause for concern for the police as well as citizens. He called for the Urban Development Corporation and the St. Anne Municipal Corporation to step in, regulate the operations, and allow the facility to run with law-abiding citizens. About three or four of them who control it. We found out now that the young man that was killed, there is some issue in regards to possible jealousy, not for sure. And since then, we believe, based on intel, that there could be some reprisal. And the possibility exists that the reprisal would take place right in Little Don's River. The police fear that the reprisal taken by any crony may cause the life of even innocent persons that is visiting the Little Don's River. So we actually closed the Little Don's River temporarily. See, it only one of our hotspots where criminal gangs run that place. And therefore, most of our police resources inside there. Now, can you imagine that you having gangsters uh, running a facility that, that make it big box? Those are cause of concern. Those are cause of concern for police officers and for citizens of Jamaica when they have all that arsenal of fun to treat it whatever they want to treat it, whenever. The UDC need to act. No, no. They need to uh, come in take over their property, put some structure into the operations over there uh, and uh, allow the, the, the facilities to run with law-abiding citizens. Flood waters recede in New Market St. Elizabeth, but air is still on watch. The National Works Agency says New Market in St. Elizabeth is still being closely monitored for flooding despite water levels slightly receding in the area. Flood waters earlier covered the road between Newmarket and Carmel following heavy rain. The water level in the vicinity of the Two Sisters Pond has receded, allowing for vehicles to traverse the roadway. But despite water levels receding, the authorities say the area remains under threat of being flooded if rains continue. NWA communication manager Stephen Shaw is urging caution when using the roadway since the situation can change depending on where and how heavy the showers come. We have to be continue, we have to continue with um, the vigilance and we continue to urge persons to exercise extreme caution when they are using that particular corridor, especially if it is that they are going to be using it during the nighttime hours because anything can happen. Depending on, on where it is that persons are going, they can use the Jacks Gate Road leading from Newmarket and that takes you to Woodstock into Darlistan and, and, and they can make their way if it is that they are going to places like Lennox, Big Woods or Carmel or you know, some of those or any of those other communities. So it depends it, it depends on where it is persons are travelling from and where they're going to. Saint and man killed in drive by shooting. There was a drive-by killing in St. Anne on Wednesday. The victim has been identified as 31-year-old Nicardo Bishop of Parry Town. Bishop was walking in the community about 2 p.m. when a car drove up and occupants of the vehicle opened a fire hitting him several times. Bishop was later pronounced dead at hospital. Teacher resignations since July climb to 248. Almost 250 teachers have resigned since July this year. Speaking in a back-to-school press conference on Thursday afternoon, Education Minister Favel Williams said 248 teachers left Jamaican classrooms during the period July 1 to present. This is 81 more than the 167 teachers she reported had left the system up to August 22. Despite the increase in resignations, the minister said many of the vacancies have already been filled, however, she did not give a specific figure. In Region 2, which comprises St. Thomas, Portland, and St. Mary, 
Mrs. Williams said 80% of schools had replaced the teachers who left the classroom. She cited two schools in the region, Boundbrook Primary and the Port Antonio Primary, which she said were two very large primary schools that have fully replaced their teachers who have resigned. The minister said 75% of teachers in St. Mary, Hanover and Westmoreland have been replaced. The education minister also announced that the ministry will be launching a platform to allow prospective teachers to upload their resumes for viewing by principals to speed up the recruitment process. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.